Cobalt CPP is one of the oldest methods to run large language models locally in quantized form. Cobalt CPP have already been covered on this channel, but recently they have made a lot of changes in the interface and few other things. So I thought of revisiting it in this short quick suite video. If you don't know what Cobalt CPP is, it is a simple to use, simple to install software for GGML and GGUF for format of LLMs. Both of these formats are quantized formats and they make it easier to run LLMs on commodity hardware like GPUs or even CPUs. The good thing about this Cobalt CPP is that it comes with only one single distributable for Linux, for Windows and other operating systems. It has built on top of Llama.CPP which is a C++ wrapper around Llama models or Llama based models or you can say that any decoder models and it adds a versatile Cobalt API endpoint too whereas you can even now do stable diffusions, image generation and you get a very nice simple user interface with a lot of things which you can do there like role play, some of the editing tools you can even put in your own notes there, you can create characters and even scenarios. So let's get started. In order to start using it, first of course you need to download it. For downloading, all you need to do is to go to its release page. So from the, its GitHub repo, you can just go to the releases page from here. You see that this is a GitHub repo. If you scroll down on it, and I will drop the link to it in the video description, you will see that there are 80 plus releases. So once you click on it, you will be redirected to this screen. From here, you can select the release of your operating system. So for example, if you're on Windows, you can select your Windows XE. If you are on Linux, you can go with uh, CPU or GPU. If you don't have GPU, you can go with no CUDA. And if you have GPU, then as per your CUDA version, you should go with it. If you're using CUDA 11, then select this first one. If you're using CUDA 12, then select this second one. So just right click on it and then copy the link from here. Now, how do you know which CUDA version you are using? If you open your terminal in Linux, and this is my Ubuntu 22.04, let me clear the screen. Just run this command NVIDIA-SMI. And if you look here, you will see that this is your CUDA version here. So I'm using CUDA 12. So I need to go with the second file. So open your terminal and then from your terminal, let me clear the screen. Maybe I'll just make a directory and I'll call it cobalt cpp and I'll go into it clear the screen and then here all you need to do is to run this curl command so by curl we download the stuff in linux systems I'm just using curl command to uh, download this and I think it is I didn't have to create this directory it will automatically put it in this cobalt cpp but anyway and then it, after downloading it it is going to change the permissions on it so let me run it let's wait for it to get downloaded and that's all done so if i do ls dash ltr here you will see that it has created the directory no it actually didn't that's cool and now in order to run it all you need to do is to run this command cobalt cpp let's run it let's wait for it to fire up first time it takes a bit of a time and then it is running hopefully now that's good and there you go so if i just make it a bit bigger this is our cobalt cpp and now if you look at this screen here it is telling you all about the configuration for example in the quick launch we have this uh, Already I have this NVIDIA RTX A6000 and then I'm just telling it how many GPU layers I want to offload it to but just keep it as is for now. And then there are a few other files that okay this is my hardware, these are the token um, configuration like how much context length do I want to use some of the model files if I already have them locally. This is a network information that it will be running on port 5001. 
you can of course change it you can even give it a dns name if you like and if you want https you can upload this secure socket layer certificates and stuff and then this if you want to join the as a swarm i guess this is for that and then for stable diffusion image generation you can go with this and this is for whisper model for the audio okay so i'll just go quick launch and then you can just click on quick launch here and then you can just select your model file here so i don't have it now there are few ways to download the model files i prefer to download directly from hugging face and if you don't know how to do it i just did a video this morning where you can simply use hugging face cli to download the models now the easiest way to download a model is to go to hugging face website just search for your model in gguf format and gguf is the latest format i would highly suggest don't use the ggml one so go to the model of your choice and then select for gguf format such as i'm going to go with mistral 7 billion and then <clears throat> click on files once you click on files you will see that there are a lot of quants available so for example if i go want to go with this quant 8 which is q8 and then you will see there is this download button so for that just right click on it and then copy link go to your terminal And then once you click on your terminal, it is going to open it. And here maybe you can just simply download it by using wget and then paste here. And it is going to start downloading it. And you see that it has started downloading it. So let's wait for it to finish. I think the size is around 8 gig or something. And it is 30 seconds. And the download is finished. So if I clear my screen and if I do ls-ltr, you will see that yeah, I think it's not showing me here so I'll just do this mistral so you see this is a file here and it has also appended download is equal to true so for that you would need to just select this whole file and then simply maybe convert it to simple GGUF so make sure that it is it has got the extension of GGUF for it to work with cobalt CPP that is much better now so we have our model on our home page so let's go back to that cobalt cpp and then we can simply either you can load the model from here or you can even select from here so if i click on launch here and then instead of where i'll just go with ubuntu and then it should be able to come on it's where cursor is stuck Okay, so it has got unstuck so this is my model file and then i just need to click double click or just click on open let's wait for it to launch and there you go it is running on that port 5001 as we saw earlier and then you see that it has telling you that which model it has downloaded this is a cobalt ai light client and then this is our custom endpoint and then instruct mode is there you can even go with your own character card or you can just type anything you like so maybe if you ask what is happiness press enter and it is going to use your local model and you can chat with it and the model has given us the response you could redo it or retry it retry means that if it doesn't work you can retry redo means that it's going to regenerate the answer you can go back or you can talk to an image you could even give it the context here and in addition to the text generation you can also do the image generation for that of course you would need a vision model such as stable diffusion and anything there are few others which you can check on their github repo which are supported i already have downloaded the stable diffusion one so either you could load it from the start or you could simply click on here and then open file and from there you can select your model let me quickly do that so if I go here and select the file name, so this is the tensor file for stable diffusion 1.5. And it seems that it has loaded the model. And this is one thing I feel that they should change. They should somewhere display the name of the model, maybe here at the top bar, so that we are 100% sure that the model is there. Anyway, 
let's ask it to generate something so i'm going to ask it uh, generate me an image of a banana let's see if it can do that let's wait for it to come back it is generating something so let's see what it does while it is generating the image let me brief you about what context is so context is what model can uh, at the same time in one time process the data that is what context is and as context get very long eventually the earlier part of whatever you are asking model to do will exceed the maximum context length of the model and it will get trimmed away so that is where this memory world info it comes handy for example, memory is a sequence of text that is um, that will always be injected into the start of each prompt sent to the AI or your model. It is useful for things the, the AI should always remember even over very long stories such as main theme of your story, the broad strokes of the setting, central conflict and something like that. Then we have author's note. This is similar to memory but it is injected near the end of the prompt rather than at the start. It is used to describe recent situations or guide the AI to behave in a certain way for the current scene. And then we have something called as world info, which is just the text that is only situationally injected into the prompt. And whenever the world info key is smashed, so whatever you add it here, then the corresponding content text gets injected into the start of the prompt. So that is what it does. Um, more it is suited towards very long context stories and that sort of stuff and there we have our banana and i'm not sure what exactly that thing in the sort of cup there anyway but we do have our banana generated by our own model and then if you want to do scenarios just click on scenario and then you can go with a new story and then maybe if you want to do fantasy so just click on fantasy you see that it is telling it okay mode is advent adventure this is author's uh, consider you can just click here and then this is action mode and then you can talk with it let me press here okay for some weird reason it is not letting me press here and then you see it is in the last thing you remembered was a loud screech and then it is just talking with us and there is a lot more to it for this role play and story writing as such as you can just convert it from here but i will do another video on it because that requires a full-blown video where we'll be creating the characters and all that stuff so all in all still interesting tool but i think a bit older um, if you ask me i would still prefer my lm studio in order to try out different models and for the role play character maybe silly tavern is better but nonetheless cobalt cpp still is very much relevant and if you are into it then you can maybe uh, upgrade to it and see how it goes also you can connect to it using your client api which is another benefit so that's it guys i hope that you enjoyed it let me know what do you think if you use cobalt cpp let me know uh, why do you like it if you don't share your opinion if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel if you're already subscribed please share it among your network as it helps thank you